All right, welcome everybody. This is uh, GTM. Uh, I'm going to be actually covering a couple of basic spline modeling tools. Um, I wanted to show you guys the lathing, not the lathing. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you some of the lofting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a 3D Max here. All right, as you can see here, I uh, I modeled a. I guess you can call it a chandelier, and it has some. Um, and it has some. Uh, looks like little candles that were light fixture candles so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the image I used and let me hide this I'm gonna grab all these and go ahead and I'm gonna hide selection here so you can see what's going on this is the image I found on the web and the main thing that I wanted to focus on for you guys, let me hide this for you guys to uh, learn was using regular splines and making them renderable and at the same time drawing splines and then lofting them with the lofting technique and being able ha you know to to control them to a point or add little details like for example right here you know when you loft it and then you're able to adjust those so let me go ahead and uh, unhide this model the one I completed and that way I can um, show you some of the breakdown I'm gonna go ahead and um, hit F4 to turn off my edges. All right, as you can see right from the very start here, these chains, as you can see they're just basically one of them and then, you know, they're kind of duplicated and then just rotated around to make a chain link. And one way how you can go about that is um let me go ahead and click on the chain itself. And as you can see it's a spline. And I'm going to turn these off right here enable render and enable in viewport and that basically is a, a simple line or spline that's drawn with these two checked on and that makes it renderable so I'm going to show you how you do that so I'm going to go ahead and create another one here and all I did was go to my shapes rectangle and I just drew a basic uh, whoops let me turn those off let me, let me start over so you can you know don't get confused here I'm going to take a rectangle here, just draw a basic shape, and let me uh, make these lines a different color so we can, you know, so you can see them. All right, so here I'll move this down as well. All right, so I, I just took this shape, I'm going to right click, convert it to a spline, and as you can see those points, you know, I have right here. And based off the first video, you know, lathing and lofting, or lathing with splines, uh, you should understand how to draw a spline by now. So uh, I'm actually going to highlight all four corners and come down here to my fillet tool. I'm just going to fillet that out and it rounds it out just like that. And then with that being done, I'm going to go ahead and check up renderable. So that's enable and render and enable and viewport. Technically, I don't need enable render. That's, you know, in case you're rendering it, you don't want to see it in the viewport, but you want to see it in the renderer. So I'm going to enable in viewport here. Now, the interesting thing is um, you have radiuses here. I can make it thicker, thinner. If I hit F4, so you can see my edges, I have, um, you know, you got sides if you want to crank up your sides. Not that you want to go too high. So I'm going to leave that at default 12. Uh, you, you know, you got certain angles you can mess with. But you know we're not going to mess with that too much. All right, and then um, what you want to do is you when you uh, when you create these, you want to keep uh, you don't want to collapse them t until you texture them because you have this generating mapping coordinates, and you know we'll get into that when we come into texturing. But for you know for uh, just for now on, I mean just from here when you're rendering splines or you know modeling in splines don't collapse them yet so basically don't right click and convert it to an edible poly yet um, you want to keep it at its base form that way in case you're ready to texture it you know especially if it's a really intricate long spline and you want to have the mapping path with it and that'll make more sense when I explain it in another video anyways but I did want to show you how you can um, you know make your splines edible in viewport now notice here if I go to my vertexes I'm gonna hit alt W I'm sorry, Alt X, so you can see my splines here. I'm gonna hit F4. 
I can still grab those vertexes, you know, and, oops, let me grab those, and I'm going to move them, you know, I can adjust them, the height, uh, if I needed to, you know, position them. Uh, another thing is, uh, if I needed to actually, here, let me uncheck this, and if I needed to actually delete a segment, so that's how I did the bottom of the chain, basically, I deleted that portion, that made it edible or you know enable in viewport and then I can you know obviously adjust those whoops let me make sure I'm getting the splines get, they're a little tricky sometimes so I just did that alright and that's how I created that so basically I'm gonna go back and I'll recreate this the chain here so now I had an enable in viewport basically I had a one spline like that shift dragged it to duplicate it and of course you know I uh, changed it 90 degrees or you know however you want to angle it on there it's probably best to go 90 degrees and then you know you can actually take both those and um, shift drag them and now you're getting a chain link and next thing you know you can have a bunch of them I just copied a bunch and now I have a big chain link and if I want to I can come back in each one separately and so forth so I'm gonna go ahead and delete those but that's how I basically created the chains and don't get me wrong that's just one you can create chain links alright so um, now the next thing I want to explain is uh, how I created oh as you can see the chain links as well sorry I took these oh, and I just kind of um, you know shift dragged it down here and then position them resize them and then shift drag them. That's how I made those little, you know, I guess they could represent some kind of wiring or rotting wire or rope or whatever. So that's how I did those. Alright, but the next step though is um, how to loft on a spline and then control it. So we're going to actually loft these two right here and then this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this and let me ungroup everything I believe it groups so I'm gonna click on this spline as you can see there's the loft and then you know I have the spline itself is which is under it and like I said I'll, I'll give you a rundown or you know I'll break that down to where it makes sense for you all right um let's go ahead and get started All right, the next step here is uh, we're going to go ahead and draw a couple of splines down. So just to make things uh, more viewable here, I'm going to um, I'm actually going to hide the arms, if you want to call them that. Let me go ahead and um, grab on all these. Right click, I'm going to hide them. Not sure why they're not hiding. Do I have these locked or something? Oops, let me uh, clear this up just a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, I got to deselect that. Alright, we'll get all started here in a sec. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna hide these. Right click, hide. And let's go ahead and right click this. Hide, and you know what? I might as well hide all of them. Let's get rid of these two. Oops. Hide section, not hide. There we go. All right, so this is what I got, just the base. And, you know, to be honest, when I started modeling this, I started off with the ring itself, and that was just the cylinder that where I deleted the inside and then bridged them and then just kind of shaped them up. And then I did the chain link and then did the rod. Uh, this part was last, but I'll just leave it there. Right here, this is just a regular sphere. And then right here, that's basically, you know, that's just a lathe on a, a spline. I basically drew a little spline like that. You could have modeled this a hundred different ways, but that's all that was. Okay, now, let's go ahead and learn how to create a loft. Alright, so, I'm going to go ahead and go to my shapes tool here. I'm going to click on my line. And you know what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, uh, let's go ahead and hide this guy as well. 
And basically all I did was click once here, up there. Oops, let's go here. It was something on the lines of that. All right. Let me uh, make this a different color. That way you can see it. That's why I've been using yellow here. All right. Now from here, you click on your spline. Obviously, you have the vertex segments and splines. So the vertex is actually the points, you know, and the splines are the two, the line between the two points, and the spline itself is the whole line, just in case you forgot. All right, so I'm going to click on this vert here. I'm going to right click right around here. You know, you have these uh, four different options busier corner, busier corner, and smooth. Right now we're in corner. So I'm going to go to smooth. So that way I'm smoothing out the line a bit and just, you know, just to aligning it. I'm going to come down here. Probably right click, smooth that. Something like that. And then I'm going to come here. Let's see what we can do. We probably might not need him. Uh, maybe. Control Z. Let's go ahead and um, let's grab him. Smooth him. I think I had that guy smoothed as well. But let's see. I, have to, I might have to reposition him a little bit. Let's go ahead and smooth him. Now I think from here what I did was actually instead of smooth on that one I did a busier corner and then I was able to kind of control it a little bit on both sides and I kind of tucked him down here I moved him up. So I had something on the lines of that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and draw another one now. Take another line and that's going to represent this one. So I'm just going to Click a line here, say one, two, let's go three, something like that. You don't have to have it as accurate as me because you're going to have to reposition things anyways. So I'll click this and give it a different color. Let's go back to yellow again so you can see it against the image. I want to go back to my spline now, which I have selected, and start adjusting these verts. So I'm going to right click it. Let's see, smooth probably works best right off the bat. I'm going to kind of tuck that over here. I'm going to grab this one and let's go right click, smooth, and I believe, let's go smooth on this one, and we could probably get rid of him, and maybe bring him back down, so something, you know what, I better keep him, so something like that, and then, yeah, I guess that works. If I smooth, I'm not sure if I would. Yeah, I guess he would work. I guess that's good enough. Something like that. All right, now I'm going to Control or Alt W so you can see what's going on in my perspective. There we go. Just basically drew a line. Let me get rid of this plane right here just to get it out the way. I'm going to hide that. All right, so here goes our, you know, our uh, spline that we drawn. Now, as you can see here, I have a regular circle spline I drew down there. And you know what? I'm actually going to draw you a couple of other ones just so you have a demonstration of it. I'll even use a little, wow, where's the star? Yeah, I'll even throw a star down here. And I believe he's here somewhere. I should have driven from the top. Let me, that way we can have it accurate here. I'm going to go from the top and I'm going to draw a little star. Something like that. Here, let me scale that down a bit. Like I said, you can draw any kind of shape, really. And you know what? I'm going to draw another one here. I'm going to go uh, just take a line tool and draw a weird, random shape. Something like that. I'm going to close the spline. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and um, just right click and smooth everything. Okay, so I just have this random generated shape. And let me resize that. Makes no sense at all, but. Alright, but what I wanted to show you is uh, the neat thing about lofting. So I'm going to bring that down with the rest of them here. As you can see, I have. You know, I have these three 
or these two splines drawn that's representing the arms of the chandelier and then these shapes right here so I'm going to start off with the main shape that I laid down this one right here just so you can see it all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the spline right here and if you want to name it you know you can always call it like bottom bottom arm or bottom rod or whatever it is all right now with that selected I'm going to go to standard primitives compound objects is what it is this is where you want to go so that's standard primitives compound objects all right so you're gonna there's some tools here different types but the one we want to focus on is loft all right so if I select that you're gonna see get shape right here and if I click that I'm gonna get the shape that I laid down and the first one I'm gonna get is that I want to work with is the, the circle here I click that so that basically lofts it down that line pretty neat huh? all right now that's not just it so now if I go to modify here I have my loft but I also have the settings all up in here for that loft so for example if I want to bring down my pass steps I can crank them up to have more you know to have it more detailed or less detailed let's go I had it at 20 so we'll keep it at 20 uh, you got your steps here you can crank these up then you don't want to go too crazy though to be honest five is perfect you know that's if you have like a really thick line or something so I'm gonna keep it at five whoops let me uh, edit redo create lot let's bring this down to five all right also notice down here um, if I click on let me find it I think it's let's see let's make sure I want to find the radius of the loft. So let's go to path, shape, and then loft. And he should be actually. You know what? I have to click on. Yeah. What I want to. What I wanted to show you was, you can change the thickness of the loft on the fly. So I'm gonna actually click on him. This is what I was looking for. The circle, and then if I change the radius. You can see, you know, it basically adjusts the size of the loft, which I'm going to keep it at his normal, whatever the one that was created at. Just want to let you know that's how you would adjust that. So I'm going to click back on here, and then you're going to click the loft. Now, here's what I want to show you now. Right here. I'm going to grab the path. Notice I'm in the loft. I go to path. I can still get the vertex and I can highlight those and actually reposition these still. You know, if I wanted to grab the vertex over here and reposition it and whatnot. This is pretty good for when you're like drawing wires on the walls or, you know, just telephone wires, or anything like that. This method will work. All right. But what I wanted to show you was, we're going to adjust this little section right here without having to convert it to a poly and add it. So, I'm going to go back to my loft. All right? We're going to come down here and there's a deformation. This is really neat. So, I'm going to go ahead and um, click on scale. And I'm going to hit F4 in this window so you can see what's going on. And let me, you know, let me change the color of that there so you can see let me zoom up on this all right now here's what I'm gonna show you with that deformation let me get get it back up all right this um, this control panel here says scale deformation this point represents the end of this point right here this point represents the end right here now I can add points by using this insert corner point now what I wanted to show you is I want to recreate that little part so if I hit alt X you can see it's transparent I'm gonna hit F4 so you can see it there is a little X right here at the end of that point and it's basically known as the path parameter so watch when I crank this up, you're going to see that little X move. So I'm going to 
crank this all the way up because I want that X to be towards the end here and that's a hundred percent so if I wanted to I can just you know type in a hundred percent now that X is way over here and then you can see it right there as well so I'm gonna just bring that slightly down you know somewhere like that right about there now here's the neat thing I'm gonna take this point here in my scale tool and I'm gonna click one point notice that's gonna add a segment and I'm gonna click another one here and I'm gonna take my move tool not from here but from here and I'm gonna basically I believe I'm gonna make that little thicker so I'm gonna bring him up just like that and then I'm gonna bring him up and I can bring this up just like that and as you can see it's taken shape so that's the shape of it I can even uh, you know I can zoom up on here and then I'm moving this over and I can actually grab both points at one time holding control I believe or hold on click and then or basically I guess you can just highlight them both and then I can move those and as you can see I'm creating that one little point and you know if I need to adjust it out or adjust it in or maybe make it more straight let's grab him make this more straight you're starting to see we're getting a little control over there and that's one way of doing that don't get me wrong if I you know that's how you can create hoses garden hoses and whatnot I can create more points if I wanted to you know I'll create four here and then I'll actually move these two up and as you can see that's how it adjusts the, you know that spline I can bring this in bring this in and as you can see that's how you can manipulate that spline a little bit it's good for creating pipes and stuff like that. that's another way you know don't get me wrong you can easily probably poly, poly model certain things that look like that without having to use a, you know your scale deformations but I'm going to go ahead and delete those and delete these I don't need them there and that's all I wanted to show you for that one alright so we're gonna do the same thing and you know I'm gonna go ahead and close that out I'm gonna go back to my path and vertex and I'm just gonna you know I can raise that up however you know I want to shape it in there alright now we're gonna end up doing the next one which is this line right here all right but you know before we um, create that next loft I wanted to show you examples with the other shapes so I'm going to go to uh, perspective here let's hit alt W on that all right um, right here I'm going to click on this line so we're going to get deselect that line we're clicking on this one now the same process goes I'm going to go to compound objects which click here and you might see standard you click there you should be from you should be on it from before but that's how you get to it compound objects I'm gonna go to loft and this time I'm gonna go get shape but I'm gonna get the star here and then as you can see it lost the star shape now I'm gonna cut back just a little bit I'm gonna go control Z I'm gonna go loft I'm gonna get shape I'm gonna get the circle this time but also remember our path tool I'm gonna hit alt X so you can see I'm gonna bring this path right here the path I'm gonna bring it say we'll go 25 percent so it's down 25 percent here of the hundred percent and I'm gonna get shape again from there and I'm gonna get the star if I click that now from there it goes from circle to star now if I move it down the path again say about another let's say another we'll go 30 percent so I only moved it five percent now if I get shape again and go back to circle it turns it back to a circle so I went from I basically went from 
circle to star to circle. And, you know, I can move that up another, say, I don't know, we'll go 35%. And I'm going to get the shape. And this time I'm going to get this weird looking one. And that's what happens. You know, maybe I want to bring it back down to, not that it made any sense. I just want to show you the idea behind it. And, you know, I can get shape again. And go back down. And, you know, that's what I'm just saying. That's how you can get some weird designs. And trust me, that's how you get like table legs where it might be you might lo uh, lathe something, and then but towards the end, you know it's kind of blocked out like a square. So that'd be a one way of going about it. Um, I've seen uh, you'd be surprised what you can model using just shapes alone and doing this technique. Um, hopefully one day I'll put a video together. But there's ton I'm sure you can find tons of them on YouTube. I believe there's a pretty decent one called uh, you know, how to model a screwdriver with uh, shapes. Uh, definitely worth taking a look at in case you want to check that out. Alright but for now you know I'm gonna go ahead and let's get rid of that. Let's go back to the 0% and we're just gonna get the shape and make sure it is you know um, let's go ahead and uh, actually delete that loft. We're going to delete that. There we go. Now, all I'm going to do is come my shape here. And we're going to go to compound objects, loft, get shape, and then I'm getting my circle one. All right. Now, back to our, um, you know, front view here. And, you know, I'm going to change that from pink to yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and hit F4. Just so you can see the loft itself. All right, now from here, we're gonna get this to a point. So I'm gonna go back to modify. We're picking on our loft. Back to our deformations. And remember, you got other ones you can test out: bevel, twist, tw you know, twist, tweeter, fit. You know, feel free to explore with those. I'm gonna turn on scale again. And you know, this point being represented by this end, I'm gonna just bring that down and as you can see it kind of you know really thins it out here I raise that up a little bit so you can see alright but from there you know I'm gonna add another point click right there and I'm gonna raise that up a bit and bring this one down so I have something on the lines of that you know, I guess I could have a little more control of it, but you know, just so you get the idea. And that looks pretty good. And of course, from there, you know, all I did was, um, you know, I modeled this with a lathe, and this portion was done with a you know, cylinder. This was done with a cylinder, and this was done with a cylinder. And I just kind of shaped it up. Eventually, what I did is, uh, once you got all those pieces modeled, and of course, I took the rings. And made that little portion right here. Let me unhide everything. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. Unhide the rest. And what I done basically was I took. Uh, let me go ahead and delete these. Just so you can see what I did afterwards. And I'm gonna delete this one. And yeah, so that's all I had. Oops. So let's get rid of this last one here. Okay, so basically all I did was uh, I had this whole section right here. I grouped them. So I just grabbed everything in that arm. Here, I'll hide unselected so you can see what I got. You know, I just have everything right here. Once they were all modeled, I grouped them. Just like that. And now. You can see my pivot point is right here. So what I did was hit my little hierarchy, affect the pivot point, and I had put that right in the center, but I made sure I paid attention to all viewports. Yeah, it looks pretty good in the center. Turn it off. And then from there, I just took my rotate tool. With everything else in the scene, I just 
held down shift, moved it down, say 90 degrees. Whoops, let me go 90. There we go. And then I just made two more copies. And there you go. And then I had my chandelier created. And then, of course, you know, I put a nice little, you know, I just put a plane on the ground where you see here. Or wherever I did, which I think I deleted it. Yeah, well, you know, you can add a plane. Standard, and I'll just do a plane on the ground. And I made sure uh, that plane was, you know, below, hanging below slightly, you know. And then I made sure it was really. Here, let me Alt W this. I clicked that, just made it really big, and of course I did my ambient occlusion render, which I want you to do. And then, um, if you decide to do this t tutorial. And then, uh, of course, I set my ambient occlusion. If you want to watch that video, there's tons of videos where I have done it before. Uh, I have a video on how to set up the ambient occlusion render. And that's all I did. I basically just rendered out at me an ambient pass. And of course, I didn't want the black one up there, so let me cancel that. Let me crop this up. And let me go perspective, show safe frame so I know exactly what I'm rendering. All right, so there you go, and then I render that out as an ambient pass, and then save that. Like I said, uh, this won't be uh, as you can see right here. I could probably adjust that a little better, move it over. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to attempt this, uh, you know, if you wanted to attempt uh, this chandelier, what wasn't required for a lab assignment, but I wanted to introduce you to some some new techniques with the lathe. I'm sorry, with the lighting. And, um, yeah, basically you're lofting your shapes. And what else did I cover? Oh, yeah, and rubble splines, you know, like the chains. I wanted to teach you that and then lofting. All right, hopefully you pick something up and, um, you know, this, hopefully this will help you uh, create more interesting objects or, you know, some models, you know. You never know what you can use that technique for. Rod iron fences. Uh, I've seen hair on characters lofted. I've seen uh, pipes and you know for engines lofted pipes on motorcycles. A lot of things you can do with that technique. All right. Any anyways, uh, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.